to Up Production. We got a new toy and we're going to share the unboxing with you. So we bought a studio, like a portable studio setup a couple of months ago, and it was like 30 something inches because I went off the premise that bigger is better. And we tried making a video on that. You didn't see it. Why? Because all you would have seen is one screen of this huge box. It was just enormous. So we thought, hey, you know what? We still want to do pictures of food and smaller things. So we need one of these things. Now that other one will probably get used too, just probably not as much. So I went on Amazon and found the Fin Homie. Fin Homie, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Photo Lighting Studio Lightbox Kit, 16 inches. I figure 16 inches ought to do the job. What we're basically doing is keeping in line with the last video that we did where we talked about tools that we use to make our YouTube videos. Well, this is one of those tools that we're gonna use to make YouTube videos and thumbnails and stuff. So let me just cut this sucker open. Hopefully keep all my fingers. Close the blade when you're done cutting. Don't ask me why I know to do that. Excess cardboard. That was actually placed underneath the split, so that way yeah. if you've got too zealous with your cutting of the box, you would not cut your product. Ooh, so far, I'm impressed. Comes in a bag. I like stuff that comes in bags. Let me let me remove this. We do. We do like things that come in a bag, and other than it's cool that something comes in a bag, it's very handy and tidy and neat. So we have all the parts that we need for this particular product self-contained, and we like that. Speaking of all the parts self-contained, look at this. Uh-oh, I found parts. Okay, may require two people sometimes. Just gonna... Dump it out. Look at that. Things we don't need. Instructions. <laughs> this would be one of the light bars. This would be the other light bar. See? We need instructions for it. You need instructions to know exactly how to place these things, particularly if you're not familiar with using a self-contained mini studio. I'm seeing... And when you get random parts that you have no idea what their use is for, that's when instructions are very helpful. They're for these! Alright, so are we going to actually assemble this on camera too? Yes. Show them every... All the good things. In all the painful detail. Those silica things, make sure that they get picked up. Silica packets are helpful, but they're also bad, particularly if you have pets in your house. So you want to make sure you keep track of these things and dispose of them appropriately. All right, so what we're gonna do is Brian is just gonna randomly start doing things because that's what he does. And I'm going to attempt to read the directions. Notice she said attempt. So now we have a checklist. Do we have the light bag? Yes. Do we have the light tent? Yes. Do we have the corner pieces? Eight. Are there eight? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. We have nine. We have nine. Ours goes to nine. <laughs> do we have two LED light bars? We do. Do we have a power supply? Um, we do. Do we have 12 frame tubes? We probably have 13. We have thunder and lightning outside we have too. <laughs> 12. Do we have three backdrops? Should be six. Oh, we got an extended remix five. version. Five. Huh? This one says three, but... Well, there's five. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. All right. I made sure to get one that had five or six. Neat. Um, do we have the light softener for reflective object? Mm. Okay, frame assembly. Numero A. You're going to assemble the tube by inserting the tubes into the corner box. So this isn't quite so It's just like a Lincoln log portable, kind of dealy. But what I'm looking at is like breakdown. You got to put this together every time you want to use it? That's what it looks like. Seems kind of lame. Well, more than likely, we're going to set it up and then just put it like on top of Gizmo's cage or something. True. <laughs> Gizmo that would is be our the, cat. <laughs> it's like a, a vertical oubliette over there. Where, whatever goes up on top of there, it's like in the place of forgetting. I'm joking. 
but we do put stuff on top of it. Here, you can have all but one because you only said you needed eight. Well, this is being contagious. Ah! So if you had Lincoln Logs when you were young. Any age. <laughs> what? This is pretty much like that. I would play with Lincoln Logs now. Uh, that's true, we both would. <laughs> Let's be honest. I keep walking by the Legos in Target going, oh, I want Legos. That's what we need to do. We need to get Legos and start a Lego building channel. Just us sitting there playing with Legos. I'm sure that exists. It probably does, but but it's not us. It's true. Which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, to be honest, <laughs> but it's definitely a thing. It's different. All right. I have a feeling this is going to get sped up. There's just no way people oh, are going to yeah. sit and watch yeah, this yeah, whole yeah. thing, even though we're talking. So when we're talking, it's probably... Oh, we're going to stop talking. This is good content. Here. I would have thought these would be plastic. But hey, you know, the thing was like 50 bucks. For 50 bucks, what do you expect? Perfection, right? That's what you expect. It got very good reviews on Amazon. There will be a link to this exact item in the description of this video. However, you might want to wait until we're done putting it together and using it to see if we recommend it or not. Okay, we've successfully made a cube. So now that we have our cube, we are moving on to B, which is the photo tent assembly. We want to open the tent and push the cube frame into the tent completely. So I will hold the cube frame. Brian will open the tent. The tent has been opened. And now I'm gonna try not to bash her. The microphone is right here, so we're trying really hard to not hit it. Like we just did. Well, you didn't open it completely. You didn't? No. How am I supposed to know? You're the one with the instructions. Complete. Oh, now I see. Yeah. Yeah, this is a tight fit, too. I'm going to switch. It's, it's too far in, so we got to... I got it. Violence all right. was the answer. And all the way in, they said? Yep. It's gonna, this might take a couple minutes. Far more involved putting this thing together than I thought it was going to be. Nobody said that in the reviews. The other one that we bought, though it's much larger, actually was portable. Like it totally broke down to a, a folded up size very easily. Note to those who might get this. Be very careful when you're doing it. I don't feel like this fabric is going to last forever if you're if you're just tugging and pulling on it like crazy. So be careful as you're doing this. It just, I mean, it's not crappy construction. Don't get me wrong; it's decent, but uh, the amount of stretch you have to put here makes me a little bit nervous. All right, we need the zipper on the outside of the bar. Ugh. Now you tell me. Is it? Yeah. It's sort of gone. Yeah, it's working. Oh, okay. Oh, it only, go, it only goes part way. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So now that we have it completely enclosed in the box, we're just going to zip it up. It's upside down. <laughs> and now the photo tent is completely assembled. It's upside down. And ready for light bar installation. Uh, there we go. It is no longer upside down. See, I know I knew it was upside down because Finn homie. Finn homie? Finn homie. Finn, Finn homie. Finn homie. Fin I, I have no idea. So, the photo tent comes with two metal strips on the top that will hold the magnetic light bars in place. They're magnetic. Huh? Okay. Feed the LED light bar power cords through the small flap on the left-hand top side of the light. See figure eight. 
I think it's this one. Alright, so let's open you gotta this. Open, it up. open the flap. So one of the things that I like about this that I'm seeing already before we really get into it is that the different flaps have Velcro. Can you grab that? Uh, with Velcro on the opposing side to hold it in place. So oh, I, I really there's like magnetic that. strips in the in yeah. the yeah. fabric thing. Yeah. See, that was happiness from Brian. It's less frustration from Brian, if anything. I'm just sticking these guys in here. You know, we should probably show them what this looks like inside right now. All right, so now we're entering into the portable studio and you can see the framework there, right? And as I go up, there are the lights and it's really cool because, let me see if I can do this with my hand. See, that's just magnet on there, pretty cool. And there's the little hole that we were talking about that everything feeds through, which leads out here to the top and that's the top, and there's the wires coming out of there. And this Looks is the... Here. There we go. And that's the Velcro part I was talking about for the flap. Yep. And it all covers up. And then, like, it's all zipped together. This is actually pretty well made, I have to admit. It's, it's kind of cool. I'm kind of dubious about the silver reflective coating inside. That kind of means specular highlight kind of things. But um, we'll get to that. What I mean by specular highlights is if you have a white reflective surface, it makes for softer highlights like whites of eyes and things like that. If you have a specular surface, it tends to make like that bling effect a little bit more. So that could be good, could be bad. It does have an interesting, almost a pebble texture. So maybe it's designed to break that up. And instead, by using the silver, they're just doing that to maximize the amount of light that can come out, which that is a possibility. So the cores that we pulled through the hole on the top that connect to our power, our light strips, they suggest that you pull as much of the cord out of the hole as possible so that way you won't have a chance of any of the cords draping into your uh, viewing area. Yeah, I saw that a few minutes ago. I was like, okay, one of them is like, kind of like hanging in there. I'm going to plug this in. <laughs> power! So they actually want you to connect the lights to the power source before plugging it into the outlet, but Brian never does things the way he's instructed to. Sounds like somebody's got a case of this post is. Because he just doesn't. It is in the off position, though. You know, like they would say if you're getting on a plane. Well, they, they have a, a big note. Do not connect the power supply to your power outlet at this time. Thank you. Fine. <laughs> Once the wires are fished through the tent opening, it is time to hook up the power. Caution, the light bars are very bright. Do not look directly at the illuminated light bar for prolonged periods of time when the light bar is lit. Connect both LED light However, bars. However, you could look at it all you want when they're not lit. <laughs> Connect, do what he did. Connect both of them. Plug them in. Ensure that the connectors are seated completely to ensure proper operation. And now, Brian, you may plug it into your outlet. So Brian wants to check out the lights, so we're going to let him do that. Um, whoa! See? Do not look directly at them! <laughs> There's a, does... a slight delay. Yeah! I was starting to think it didn't work. It's kind of like, you know, you have a cannon and it didn't fire. So what do you do? You look down the cannon and then boom! Boom! You know? it, um, wow, they do get really bright. Um, one thing I'm noticing is this is... It does have a power control and it's pretty good i mean let me let me turn that towards the towards the camera so you guys can see there's off right and then as i turn it on i'm looking at a, a monitor over here that's why see how bright that gets but it does not have a temperature control that's interesting but your camera can white balance in most cases so not really so much of an issue i'm gonna turn this back Next. So our next project is to install the backdrops. And I... It just seems like you should have done that before. Rather what? than lean over like this, I'm just going to be the disembodied voice and you get to look at Brian. They'd probably rather look at you, though. <laughs> so they want you to open the zips on the front cover and put the backdrop inside. Like I said, shouldn't this have been done before it was assembled? But... 
but hey, it's all right. So what color background should we choose for our very first photograph using our new portable studio? Uh, red. Why? Because you like red. I don't know. Black, white, What are we going to take a picture of? Uh, let's do gray. And that gives us more options. So the backdrops themselves are actually plastic, not paper, which is actually really cool, makes me happy. They seem like they will wipe off pretty easily. The only problem with plastic is static. So stuff's gonna stick to them. But if you could put those over to the side so that they're not completely in the way. A trick with dealing with static is if you have a lint dryer, like a fabric softener sheet for your, your laundry, many times you can use that to rub something down and it's gonna reduce the static. Okay. The background is now inside. Okay, so what they want you to do is remember all those little folds and flippy things that you saw that you were annoyed with? No. But sure. Uh, these. Oh. That's where you slide the corners in for your backdrop. Okay. So I'm, gonna, says, I'm just going to flip this up over the top. Let me let me show them. Let me show you what we're talking about. So they have those little, like, pockets they stick the background into. That's what she's talking about. They say, insert the edge of the backdrop into the upper slot and finish. Uh, Is there an upper slot? There, there appears to be an upper slot. It's not the most convenient thing to try to do. But there is an upper slot. I'll get it. I would have thought that's what the clips were for. The clips seem to be... I don't know what the clips are for, actually. Okay, first problem I'm noticing is the backdrop is just ever so slightly short, which means you have to kind of finagle the bottom edge and the top edge to make it... Oh, maybe the clips are to hold it... So you but don't you can't... have to worry about the slot mm. if it keeps sliding out? Maybe. Let me let me show you what we're talking about. So if you look up at the top there, see there's a little slot across it. And then there's a clip. Well, the backdrop itself will sort of hold in there, but you see how it looks like it's pulling out a little bit? I'm wondering if maybe the clips might be a better idea. But I don't know, because it seems okay. It's making a little bit of um, a psych wall. Um, or what's the... There's another name for it, but... It's kind of creating that kind of an effect. I guess I can use more angle on it or that kind of thing, and it might be okay. And I'm sure these things, because they're plastic, over time they will lose a little bit. Oh, see, all I had to do was move this in just ever so slightly, and I got it to work a little bit better. So the light tent. Yeah. This would be like a diffuser panel. Yeah. So this will help to make like a softer... Uh, lighting pattern over everything. Oh, great. More clips. Yeah, and they just clip onto the poles. It's just a oh. very simple installation. But when you think about it, that's the, this is exactly the same thing as a softbox. Um, they go on the sides. Seems like this. Yep, goes on the sides. Okay. Times like this, when I have to reach with one hand and I get frustrated, this is when it's good to have a partner in life who understands these things and says, hey, want me to do that for you? All right, so she did that. Let me let me show you what that panel looks like when it's installed. Okay, so here you can clearly see the light panel across the top, and then there's that white panel. That is the softbox effect or diffuser or whatever they're calling it. And what's really interesting is I think you can actually move this up or down to dramatically change the um, the softness of that light. That could be kind of an interesting thing. I do have the light not all the way up, but check that out. Look at that. So if I turn this down a lot. So you can really now see the effect of how much light you got in this thing. We're working on a tight space here, you know, just trying to show you guys everything. So we're done. We're completely set up. We're ready to photograph something. I, I honestly am impressed. I, yeah, I feel bad. like this is plenty of space for what we intended to get one of Plates these of food, mini basically. studios for. So I'm really happy for that. I'm also really happy that 
we can use this in our space without crashing into our microphone, without mm -hmm. crashing into our studio setup. So it's going to be a lot more convenient for us, which means it's actually going to get used more frequently. Yeah, that's the trick. You know, the best tool, just like the best camera, is the one that you have with you, the one that you'll use. So let's just, I'm going to do something. We have a camera, two cameras available right now. The first one is right here. This is the video camera that I've been doing some video with. I'm just gonna, we're gonna take a picture of a camera. Just setting it in the middle there. Now, I know we probably wanna close this, right? Yeah, we do. And we wanna zip it back up. Looks kinda cool, I have to admit. And then, you know, the camera that you always have with you, your cell phone, right? So let's see, how does this work? Well, okay. First problem that I see is I'm too far back because I saw the poles. So if I go in closer, see, it's very difficult to get the picture without the poles. I may have to move it back more in the background or zoom in slightly using my zoomy thing here. Okay. First impression of that photo, you, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see it is um that worked pretty well it, it's there's a little bit of shadow gradation on the background because you know i have this at full and i'm using a cell phone and whatnot but honestly that's pretty good i mean it's it's like a nine out of ten okay for a studio shot the lighting is really nice and even the specularity that i was talking about was prevented by the soft diffuser up in the top and i think the pebble texture actually does do it so as i'm looking at this I'm, I'm just trying to see what if anything i'm not happy with and honestly for a cell phone photograph to be able to do it that quickly and easily this is wonderful something else of note there's a hole in the top as well by the way the extra noise that you might be hearing that sounds like rain is in fact rain um this is florida it's august and it rains here a lot okay now as soon as we open that hole the first problem that i see is you cannot actually use the you cannot actually use the diffuser panel with oh, yeah. the top hole. <laughs> so I don't know that I really want to go through taking that whole thing apart again, but you can take the diffuser panel off and shoot through the top. You do want to make sure that you have the light panels situated in such a way that they're not blocking it though. But overall, I think this is great for 50 bucks, something that is pretty lightweight. I mean, it's super light. You can here, let's just move this so that you can be seen. <laughs> She's part of this team here, you know, part of the video too. Um, for 50 bucks, this thing is actually pretty great. It's It feels durable, okay? I said earlier that it feels like the fabric might break, but that's when I was afraid of poking stuff through it. Um, I don't think it's going to break anytime soon. It doesn't seem like it's got a lot of stress areas that are going to get you know, beaten up. No, it's, it's a pretty thick yeah. material. You can tell just by feeling it. Uh, the fact that you can adjust the intensity of the light is a really cool thing. And a lot of them do that. Um, the fact that there's two lights and you can move them around too. Remember I was saying about the shadow, I noticed when I looked in the top that I had it very far forward. I could have put it more towards the back and it would have lit down. So you have some adjustment with it too, which yeah. is actually pretty neat. Those lights can move all the way from the very middle, all the way to the outsides. So you can play with where they show up. Um, overall, I have to say I'm really impressed. I'm, I'm, thinking we're going to use this thing all the time. Like we, we're probably just going to leave it set up. And like she said, put it probably on Gizmo's Gizmo's area in the oubliette of verticalness <laughs> and um, use use it all the time for taking pictures of food or of, of products, um, things that we use on our YouTube channel. So now that we have constructed it and given you our first thoughts, let's do a quick review visually to show you all of its details. So this is the front, and when you're using the top entrance, you can zip it all the way closed to avoid any light leaks. But we're going to open it up right now, and you can see there is Velcro here that will hold it in place on the top, and there is the interior. 
you can see we have the gray background plate in place and because the backgrounds are rolled up in the way that it's installed to have that seamless look there's no folds in the backdrops and that's really encouraging to me because then that's the one less thing I have to worry about yeah, it's the other one actually had folded yeah didn't it? so this makes it easy to store because they're rolled up but that roll is actually used as a benefit rather than a deterrent the only thing that we've noticed thus far that we're not too keen on is that the poles in the back do show on either side of the backdrop. So that's going to limit how wide we can go with our image. But we do know in post, as long as we have some edge on either side, we can extend the background because it's more or less one color or a gradation of one color. Now let's move to the top. So here is the top um, portal for you to photograph from. Again, this is all Velcro and zippers to make it super easy to get into. We currently have the diffusion panel in place, but it's easy enough for us to unclip that so we can shoot from a downward angle. You can see a little bit here, this is one of the light bars that Brian was mentioning, but because of that magnetic strip goes all the way across, we can move that out of our field of view. They are warm when they're on, just so you know. They're LEDs, but they do get warm. So that's it. Pretty easy peasy, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's great. Um, I'm getting ready to leave this thing a review on Amazon probably in the next couple of days. Um, it's going to get a very good review. I, I would say I highly suggest it. If you have a need to take photographs of things, I would say 10 inches or smaller that look really, really good and you want different backgrounds that you can use, I, I would recommend this. So far, it, it, it's working great. Now, we'll see how well this resistor switch works. We'll see how long the me mechanics and the actual electronics work. And that'll be like maybe a, another part of the video in a couple months or something. Who knows?